Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to DXB today. Now we have been, you know, inspiring everyone who's watching here in the UAE, talking about sustainable travel, but also trying to get inspired with ideas and activities and adventures for us to go on in the um, Emirates. And to help us get inspired is the wonderful Adam McEwen. McEwen? Did I say McEwen, that one? Yes. Adam McEwen from Hero Experiences. It's a good Scottish name. Oh. Yes. Adam McEwen. I'm, from, a, I'm from Australia, but <laughs> inherited the Scottish you name. You confused yes. me so much. I couldn't <laughs> land the accent, couldn't get the last name, and now you're. I yeah, confuse you're back myself on. now. So um, <laughs> that just sounds like you're from the UAE. We're all mixed. And, it is that yeah. UAE accent, right? So I've been away for Australia for so long. I studied in the States. I studied in Australia. I've worked around the world. I worked on ships for a while as well. Oh my so my accent is just <laughs> something that's left over from bits and pieces around the world. Which brings us to our first question, by the way, now that you've described your background, what is it that you do now? Tell us about Hero Experiences. So Hero Experiences Group um, creates experiences here in the UAE. So rather than um, selling other people's experiences, we're kind of like the end supplier. So we try to create uh, experiences where the guests become the hero of their own story. So rather than being a passenger in a vehicle or a balloon or something, we really want people to be immersed in the experience. So I guess what we're most known for is, is our first company, Platinum Heritage. We have the largest fleet of vintage Land Rovers still in active service anywhere in the world. And we do a whole collection of um, or more like African style safari. So we're out looking for wildlife, it's open air. So this really immersive um, safari experience. Um, so we're known for that, of course. Fantastic. I did um, it in June, actually. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, in June? Yeah. yeah. A bit that's brave. A cool time. It was a, it, a bit I was brave. brave. Yeah, yeah. Cold. It was great, though. <laughs> we, we do have an air conditioned version, the <laughs> Platinum <laughs> Collection. We have uh, the Range Rovers for a luxury version. So yeah. maybe. You sprung for that one. No, I mean, <laughs> climbs a mountain in winter, but then, you know, goes on the safari in the middle of summer. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> what made you get into this then? Like, what was the reason that you thought, right, I need to give this to the people? Yeah, and funny enough, the, the, when we first started, people thought we were crazy, right? Mm. There was a, a formula, a safari was a land cruiser and belly dancing in Tanura, and, and th there was a formula. Actually, we're going to try and educate people about the desert and the wildlife and the animals and maybe even the dangers of dune bashing in certain areas where there's a lot of uh, a wildlife. Um, people thought we were crazy, right? You can't, you, you can't, don't, it yeah, can't be done. The boat, yeah. It can't be done, you know? People will want that adrenaline rush, they'll want all these kind of things. So we, we started, it was my business partner and myself, um, just we had confidence that there would be a small niche of people that would want to do something a bit more special. Mm -hmm. So we had confidence in what we were, were aiming to do and we started. That small yeah. niche now, I mean, last year um, we handled almost 70,000 people in the desert. So quite a big niche now. That's amazing. Yeah. I love this as well because this sounds terrible, but I have actually never been on a desert safari. I've stayed in <gasps> desert like resorts. you've never been to Global Village. I haven't either. Oh, come on! <laughs> no, I, I've been Global to the Village Opry. this week, by the way. Okay, I'll go. Please go. Went to the lovely the glamping, you know, the luxury seven. desert resorts, all of that. But my worry has been, you know, dune bashing, the right. belly dancing, all of this, it being very... Cliché. Very cliché. Right. Whereas it sounds, you know, you guys are doing the complete opposite. So you're right. educating people as well. It's like, class. About, yeah, about the wildlife and well, how, what well, you can do to kind of protect it. was funny that we, we looked it. at the market d the same way. There was... I mean, a large number, about a million people a year go on a safari. Um, wow. And that's between people that live here and also the international tourists that come through. But we're like, there's 16 million tourists and there's 3 million people just in Dubai. So that's a lot of people not going. So let's try and do something that appeals to the people that don't want to go. And let's not try to compete with everyone else that's already doing the same thing. Let's mm -hmm. just create our own little niche. So we actually really considered that. Let's talk to the people who aren't going. Why aren't they going? And let's address that. So that's Probably what we did the with Platinum Heritage. That it's cliche and mm. it's something tourists do. Yeah, right. and I mean, I, I love the little the, the water bottles that you give as well. It's yes. Like, yeah, it's, it's, yes. it's class in, in many different ways. Um, but obviously, Platinum Heritage is just one side of it. Mm. What's the most uh, popular experience that you have with Hero? Um, can I expand on that bottle idea? Because yeah, it's yeah. quite innovative. Mm. Um, and it's what you don't see, I think, that impresses people the most. Um, we actually produce our own water on site. So we use solar powered atmospheric water generators. So the water that you're, you're filling up in your stainless steel reusable bottle yeah. is actually from the, the humidity of the air. Uh -huh. um, because, you know, rather <laughs> than just piping it in, which is bad for the aquifers, yeah. or you get trucks that come in, or you just use bigger bottles, you're still bottles. Yeah, um, yeah we try to create from the atmosphere as best as we can to make uh -huh. it as ecologically 
neutral as we can. Oh, you amazing. need to make more noise about that. That's fantastic. That is amazing. I've never heard yeah. that before. Yeah, this usually on a big industrial scale, it can be done for military okay. operations. But yeah, we've got small solar powered water wow. generators. So Now, Adam, you've obviously inspired us and uh, got an innovative concept here, but we want to hear some really accessible ideas here. Now, sure. I've been living in the UAE for 15 years. I feel like I've done so many things. Can you name a few experiences that sure. people can sign up to do with you tomorrow? Sure, so we talked about the hot air balloons. A lot of people want to go on hot air balloons. Um, we actually kind of combine services on that one a little bit as well. So um, the hot air balloon takes you over the Dubai Desert Conservation Reserve. So you're actually seeing the wildlife during the flight. And on landing, we collect people in the vintage Land Rovers, take them out to a camp and have a really nice gourmet breakfast. Oh. So that's a really nice one that everyone can book tomorrow. Um, Please, to, to <laughs> Please make everyone that, book that tomorrow. <laughs> to make it a little bit more accessible, we just launched, and this was in March, so we kind of did a soft launch in March, and we're kind of doing now the, the firm launch. Um, a, a balloon concept out of Atlantis. I don't know if you've seen that. Mm, yes, but right, yeah. right between Atlantis, the Royal, and Atlantis, right on the beach, we actually have a what's called a tethered helium balloon. I did see it, yeah. It goes up to 300 meters. So to put that in perspective, that's the same as a 100-story building. Um, so you just get that beautiful view of the whole shape of the palm. You see the World Islands, you've got Burj Khalifa, you've got Burj Al Arab, you've got the Marina, you've got Ain Dubai, like in one snapshot. I didn't you've know just got that was yours. Yeah, we've I got just everything it was a marketing there. Thing. So we can right. do so anyone can do that now. That's open now for people yeah, to do. Yeah, so a lot of people think that that's exclusively for Atlantis guests, but it's actually available for everyone. Um, okay. there's a little ticket kiosk outside. You know, get yourself your ticket and away you go. You not get now, escorted Lane. through We've Atlantis got the rest and away you go. No, so, yeah, not yeah. now, but definitely this weekend. So I'm going to be there this weekend. I'll see you there. But, the, <laughs> but my suggestion is come around sunset. Okay. It's. I mean, we are just showcasing Dubai. Yeah. You know, this is this is the great thing. The canvas is Dubai. We just showcase it. Um, and around sunset, you just get to see all of the great features. That's and at so night. Good. Perfect. I mean, I, I don't know if you've been around that that part of the world at the moment. Yeah, but definitely. At night, the it's way lovely. that's lit up, mm. yeah, and the way that the marina is lit up, and that's you see the whole throngs lit oh, up with all the lights. Yeah, I mean, it's gorgeous. beautiful. Thank you so much, Adam. It's been wonderful yeah. having you on the show. You're yeah, welcome. yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. We're, we're, uh, we need to have you back on because I know you've got a lot more we to say. We keep creating so new things. <laughs> yeah, yeah this as is we it. keep creating. Or Thank come you back. so much, Adam. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice one. Thank you. Now, calling all reptile enthusiasts. Dubai has now got its first crocodile park. It's open and it's fantastic. And I got to go and see it exclusively. It's open to the public, but I got an exclusive look to chill out with the crocs. Have a look. In Kenya and Tanzania, the wildebeest crossed the Mara River in the Great Migration. But there's someone that awaits them. It is the crocodile. So what would you say is one of the biggest misconceptions about crocodiles that everyone hears about? Well, crocodiles in the media have always been portrayed to be mindless, big killing machines that are just waiting to pounce on us, but it's not true. As you can see, they are pretty chilled. You can see them here in the park. Yes, they are very powerful, but you know, they don't move around a lot. They are incredibly smart animals. One of my, my favorite uh, films, Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. You know, I mean, Steve Irwin was one of my favorite people as well. Um, I've always wanted to be close to uh, crocodiles and I had the opportunity many years ago in South Africa, where you're from. Yes. And, um, and I actually got to hold uh, a, a little baby crocodile. Can people and visitors do that here? They most certainly can. Do you want to go try it now? Of course. Let's go. Oh, man. And what's the name of this baby? Uh, actually, we don't give it a name, but from myself, I give his name as Shadi. Shadi. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for this, Ishan. Thank you, you are welcome. Great experience. Thank you so much. And make sure if you want to come down here, come and visit the Dubai Crocodile Park in Mushrif Park in the Murdiff area. So, from Shadi, his mum and dad, and from me, peace. And you can touch him. <laughs> That 
looks amazing, Lane. Lovely. I can't wait to actually go and check it out. Right, it is now time for today's roundup. Dina Butti, what's going on? All right, let's do this. So, 3.5% of all human-caused emissions are from the aviation industry. Now, guys, this is especially significant given how few people on the planet currently fly. New research actually suggests that 80% of the world has never flown in their lives. Now, what do you think, guys? Can, yeah. Do you think the, the future of aviation can ever truly be sustainable? Yes. Think, yeah. Who knows, right? It I'm looking at you, Isabella. It depends on the fuel. Exactly. Oh, you sound like an expert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been traveling there's, there's been lots of research life. into fuel. Yeah. Um, I know Etihad Airways is taking it really seriously. Yeah, yeah. They, I feel like the whole yeah. aviation industry is taking it quite seriously. They serious. are. I feel like, you know, there are some, uh, definitely the our UAE airlines, I think, are really, you know, Emirates and Etihad are really going above and beyond, um, maybe more than other airlines. But yeah, it's hard, isn't it? It really is hard. And, you know, Aren't they working on, um, I know there's air taxis, but they're also working on electric, there's a term for it, anything that takes off and lands, but they're going to be electric instead of Right, free. right, right, and okay. that's supposed to be like the new future of aviation. I mean, that, I mean anything would just but be I'm incredible, not how far as you that say, as long as, yeah. as long as people, are, as long as there's constant work mm -hmm. as to how we could, because flying is never going to stop. We are always going to fly, it's as simple as that, yeah. so it's like, how do you try and make it that little bit? better and I suppose there are airlines that do you know they do carbon offset don't they so they'll do yeah. you know if you pay a little bit extra we will plant X amount many trees or oh, I mean it's bigger projects than okay. that that's yeah. very surface level but um, so while it's not actually taking away from the impact that the flight is making it's right. trying, trying to, to offset, offset it and... in other ways yeah. and do you think they actually do it I, we'd hope so. They charge it back to the passenger. Okay. So I can imagine a lot of people skip that over and they're like, no. But yeah, people start doing that, please. Yeah. Um, oh, ticking the box upon booking yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That it's makes like sense. Temp, not even 10% more with the fare. It's normally, you know. Yeah. But that goes towards helping. I think it's, it's interesting because we actually did a whole episode on DXB today mm. about private aviation. And I think they're the ones that are really getting the, the stick. You know, they're getting a lot of flack because, you know, it's people... Why? And that's becoming more affordable too, yeah. which is even worse. Exactly. So I don't, I don't know, like, what, what are we supposed to say? Who knows? I don't know. What did Who you knows? hear about that? Huh? What did you hear about that private aviation? No, just <laughs> Lane's like, when can I book my own jet? <laughs> no, Wait just what I mean is, is my whole life. they're just trying to get people to stop, you know, flying privately. And any, who, anyone who flies privately just gets a lot of stick because obviously that's a big issue. It's three or four people yeah. versus a whole let's flight, talk about right? It. Let's talk about it afterwards. We're, we're like, talking yeah. about it afterwards, yeah. but Isabella, thank you so much yeah. for, for, for pointing out uh, that the, the, the private sector is really looking into that and it's going to change because uh, I've got some insight into that. And yeah. yeah. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about this after. You're making yeah. yourself yeah, sure. well done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what can't you share on no, here? It's a good thing. It's a good thing. And here's what else is coming up in today's show. Paris Norris is going to be in the studio following his incredible adventure across the Pacific. And of course, we've got Nimi's exclusive one-on-one -on -one with Jada Pinkett Smith. Oh, don't we all have questions for her? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Plus, local band Wi-Fi plays us out from our favourite musical venue in the city. So stay tuned.